in 2003, uh, SARS hit Hong Kong and we didn't know what it was at the moment. We knew it was an infectious disease, a new infectious disease. And there were about four or five months in Hong Kong where we literally shut the city down, people were not going out, people were not coming to Hong Kong. So that created uh, a, an experience, an unforgettable experience for us. We realized that it was very important for there to be good air circulation. After that, people paid a lot more attention to how buildings could be designed and built Hong Kong is what I would call an ultra-extreme high-density city. We have about 42,000 buildings. Because we are a service economy, we don't have a lot of industry, 60% of the carbon emissions from Hong Kong actually come from the building sector. After SARS happened, uh, we very quickly realized that um, our built environment actually have a deep impact on our health. Um, from individual buildings, how the sewage pipe is work, the ventilation of the building inside is important. Ronald & Partners, it's an architectural design firm. Uh, we are specialized in high-density urban environment, and our focus is, is on creating human-centric design as well as sustainability design. We try to really create communities around our projects and bring about a rejuvenation on some of these areas. The CIC Zero Carbon Park was conceived in 2011. We are lucky that won the design competition and ultimately finishing this building. The purpose of this Zero Carbon Park is twofold. Uh, firstly, primarily it has, it's, uh, it has an education dimension to it. It had an experimental dimension where we have tried new technology and the building is partly as a demonstration education center. My name is Bowie. I'm from Hong Kong. I'm a master student from Hong Kong U studying in environmental management. I'm really amazed by this project because perfect showcase to Hong Kong that net zero can be achieved. Building is both the problem and the opportunity if we need to come back carbon emissions. The zero carbon buildings advocates a low carbon lifestyle for Hong Kong. Zero carbon, our definition is that overall on an annual basis, we will not consume any energies from the energy supply company. We reduce the demand of the energy and then we do as energy efficient as possible by the building systems. For generations of renewable energy on site, we have two technologies. First is the waste to energy tri-generation systems. The second renewable energy technology is the photovoltaic, which is about 800 square meter. The earth cooling systems. It is systems which we take on the air from the park, cool down by the mass of the ground. By pre-cooling the air, we can use less energy in the air conditioning systems. For the concrete that we use in this building, we try to use uh, those uh, fuel ash. Those are power generation plants, they use a lot of coal, and then we use this as a replacement for cement. And also we try to make use of uh, those locally available construction material. Right around that site, it's all these office buildings. And I think on weekdays, this park also not only serves as a green space for people, but also serves as a green lungs for that high density environment where air can go through. And, and also bring back a bit of nature. Able to find out the roots and recreate in this uh, native woodland, it's very powerful. They also bring in birds and other animals that creating a very biodiversified environment. The Zero Carbon Park is a demonstration project, but each bit of it provides an idea, a message, a methodology for designers and contractors. This project has shifted 
the entire building industry, design industry, uh, architectural and all that, the whole industry from a non-carbon, non-sustainability sort of mindset to a very, very progressive uh, approach towards sustainability, towards how we measure our carbon footprint. And that movement, it's now perpetuated up until today. And I think this building, this uh, project have solidified or landmark as a big step forward.